Hello students, welcome to the lecture on establishing a new enterprise and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss the developing a business plan, define the setting up an enterprise, discuss the feasibility study. Let's start with some introduction. Starting a new business can be both exciting and frightening. There are many practical things to consider, location, size, employees, quality control etc. It is no different for those wishing to start a new business. Perspective Prospective entrepreneurs should have a passion for what they hope to do and know the purpose and goals behind making a major change in their life or business. Popular opinion Popular opinion suggests that owning a business means working flexible hours, not being beholden to anyone, having the ability to make one's own decisions and in effect being completely independent. Entrepreneurship is as good an instigator of change as any to chart a new course to success. But this line of thinking also shows a lack of basic business understanding. Let us first understand what a business plan is. The business plan brings together the goals, plans, strategy and resources of a business by developing a comprehensive plan prior to commencement of operations. It can minimize risk and may save from significant financial and professional losses resulting from an unprofitable business. A business plan. A business plan is a roadmap for your company and a resume for investors. It's set up to give you direction as to where you want to go as a company. It also helps with planning long term as to what you want to do, where you want to go as a company, and then what direction to go if for some reason things need to shift. Starting a small business, a plan is useful for defining and directing your business and essential for securing loans and investments. Business plans are decision making tools. They should begin with a mission statement and key elements of your company. Depending on your goals and the audience that you're trying to reach, these are very different for different companies. Some of these even include market analysis and they give information that is leaning towards what your services are going to be and what you're going to offer to your customers. It should also cover demographics and there should definitely be a financial section that focuses on what your goals are, where you're aiming to grow, and then the demographics within your area. There should also be something in there about future analysis and what you're projecting as a company in the near future. Market and financial analysis is intimidating, but don't let it get to you. You need to have the basic understanding of what all these different areas mean and what they mean for your company moving forward. Without a business plan, it's difficult to bring anybody in to invest in your company because you don't have anything down on paper to say this is what we're aiming to do and why we're aiming to do it as a company. The more you can get stuff down on paper and the more focused you are as a company, the better off you'll be. There are many different suggestions for organizing and presenting a business plan. Organize and prepare a plan so that it needs style and needs as well as the need of those who will read it. For any business to be successful, it must be started and operated with a clear understanding of its customer, its internal strength, its competitive environment and a vision of how it will evolve to compete in the future. This business builder guides through the process of developing a comprehensive business plan. With a sound business plan, have solid goals to aim for, a strategy for reaching them and a useful understanding of the environment in which our business is operating. A business plan does not have to be complicated or time consuming. It simply requires considering the factors that will affect our business and allows to plan and deal with them. There are three main stages in setting up an enterprise. First, identification of opportunity. Second, consolidation of resources. Third, implementation of project. Identification of opportunities. When the entrepreneur scans the environment and looks for the technology, market demand and then selects the project idea. Consolidation of resources. The entrepreneur consolidates resources like finance, land building, machineries, raw material skill and makes a business plan accordingly. Implementation of the project. The entrepreneur sets the business venture, manages the enterprise involving manufacturing, finance management, personal management, etc., creates and looks for success and growth. Business planning. One of the important things in an enterprise is the business plan. Put simply, the business plan means a detailed analysis of the business in which all factors needed for business success are considered. 
starting from selection of the product idea, finding how to make it, looking at the market and deciding what part of the market will be focused on, down to managing the production, cash flow, employees and quality are analyzed and a plan of action is set down in a business plan. A business plan is not something that is prepared once and then followed. As the environment in which the enterprise exists keep changing, the enterprise also has to respond to these changes. An enterprise starts with a business idea. The entrepreneur scans the environment for a project idea from among the various opportunities available and select one project idea. The entrepreneur does an initial market survey and checks if the project idea is worth taking up and also checks if appropriate technology is available. In the first business plan, therefore, the entrepreneur must think and put down how she would do these things and what action she plans to take in this regard. Are you interested in starting a business? Creating a business plan is the most important step you can take towards success. Think of a business plan like a roadmap. It sets the direction for the early years of your business and outlines how you plan to make sales and grow revenues. A business plan generally includes six sections. They are an executive summary, a company overview, market research data, a description of your products or services, your marketing and sales approach, and your financial projections. Let's take a closer look at each section. An executive summary is the first section of your plan. Use it to introduce your business and identify your customers. Make a short but strong case that explains how you'll make your business successful. The next section is your company description. Provide a high-level explanation of your business, what it will do, and how it will make money. Include a mission statement and the location of your business. Identify key employees and any other qualities that make your business distinctive. Next up is your market research. Use this section to provide detailed information that shows you've done your homework and that you understand your industry and target market. Be sure to include an assessment of your competitors and any legal requirements impacting your company and industry. The fourth section is a description of your products or services. What are you selling? How will it meet the needs of your customers? What are its benefits compared to the competition? Answer these questions in detail and be sure to note the current development stage of your business. Discuss marketing and sales in the fifth section of your plan. Explain how you'll identify potential customers. You'll also need to include your marketing approach. Provide financial projections in the final section of your business plan. This is important for investors and lenders because it explains how your business will meet its financial obligations and maintain a positive cash flow balance. Key elements of business planning. Product idea, technology, marketing, manufacturing, money, employees, startup launch, success and growth. The various elements which go into a business plan are idea, entrepreneur, market match. An entrepreneur and enterprise business idea has also the market need to match. An assessment of the attitude and aptitude as also socio-economic consideration of an entrepreneur matter most in creating an enterprise. The fit needs to be accessed objectively. For example, an entrepreneur may not go into silk reeling activity for she saw that the silk worms get killed before the silk yarn is removed from the cocoons. The very idea was repulsive to her. She matched between the idea, entrepreneur, market has to be done after the initial market survey. For instance, checking if there is a market for the product idea selected, what kind of market and will the entrepreneur be able to penetrate such a market will help decision making. If it is a challenge, it is the entrepreneur capable of taking such a challenge or is there alternate option? If so, entrepreneur can go ahead. If not, she has to start with the new idea. The enterprise must also be within the resource rich of entrepreneur, micro and small enterprise MSE. The definitions of small or micro enterprises vary from country to country. In most countries, there is some form of assistance or benefits provided by enterprises that are defined as micro and small enterprises. Most developing countries take into account investment or project costs as the basis for a such a definition. The project cost, as defined by United States Development Program UNDP, is fixed capital plus net initial capital. An entrepreneur is one of the most segments of economic growth. Basically, he is a person responsible for setting up a business or an enterprise. In fact, 
He is one who has the initiative, skill for innovation and look for high achievements. He is a catalytic agent of change and works for the good of people. He puts up a new green field projects that creates wealth, open up many employment opportunities and leads to the growth of other sectors. The entrepreneur displays courage to take risk of putting his money into an idea. Courage to face the competition and courage to take a leap into unknown future and create new business enterprises. This creative process is the lifeblood of the strong enterprise that leads to the growth and contributes to national development. The entrepreneur will always work towards the creation and enhancement of entrepreneurial society. Types of organization. The following are the various types of enterprises which could be formed to provide a legal status. Proprietorship, that is individual owner. Partnership, more than one owner. Private limited, more than one owner. It is different from partnership in legal makeup and constitution. Public limited, wherein the public are called for subscription and there is a large number of owners. Cooperative societies, individual shareholding and formal unorganization. Difference between entrepreneurship, self-employment and income generation activities. Development sector focus is on income generation for the marginalized and low income groups and they tend to work with women on income generation activities for economic advancement. When entrepreneurship is mentioned, it is possible that this may be taken to refer to such activities as well. Entrepreneurship, however, goes much beyond income generation activity and even self-employment. It is important for the facilitators to understand difference between these three common terms used in any economic development activity. Although there are a lot of commonalities among these concepts, the difference need to be fully appreciated. Income generating activities are often part time and are practiced for raising additional income. They are usually supported by funding various sources and do not tend to be self sufficient. Self-employment refers to full-time involvement in one's occupation in which one may or may not have take time risk to mobilize inputs and other resources to organize total production or to market the product services. Entrepreneurship involves strong use of business skills and is mainly market oriented. It also involves employment of at least one other person and managing personnel is an important factor in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship equals to enterprise plus entrepreneur. Now did you know that the statutory body of the company must apply to the relevant code to incorporate the company into the commercial register within 90 days from the date the company was founded or the company's trade license or similar business authorization was issued and delivered. Now let us discuss about feasibility study. A feasibility study's main goal is to access the economic viability of the proposed business. The feasibility study needs to answer the question, does the idea make economic sense? The study should provide a thorough analysis of the business opportunity, including a look at all the possible roadblocks that may stand in the way of the cooperative success. The outcome of the feasibility study will indicate whether or not to proceed with the proposed venture. If the results of the feasibility study are positive, then the cooperative can proceed to develop a business plan. A feasibility study should examine three main areas market issues, technical and organizational requirements, financial overview. Market feasibility, a market whether a place or not is the arena for interaction among buyers and sellers. From seller's point of view, market analysis is primarily concerned with the aggregate demand of the proposed product service in future and the market share expected to be captured. Success of the proposed project clearly hinges on the continuing support of the customers. It is a study of knowing who all compromise customers for this required information on consumption trends, past and present supply position, production possibilities and constraints, imports and exports, competition, cost structure, elasticity of demand, consumer behavior intentions, motivations, attitudes, preferences and requirements, distribution channels and marketing policies in use. Administrative, technical and legal constraints impending on the marketing of the product. A market feasibility analysis determines the likelihood that a proposed land use or development will fulfill the objectives of a particular investor or a community. Market feasibility studies. Market feasibility marketing research studies involve collecting information about a potential market that can be used in deciding how a product or service should be designed, delivered, priced and marketed. What is secondary data? Secondary data is information that has already been collected and is available to the public. Examples include population statics from the U.S. Census, 
economic indicators from the Bureau of Labor Statistics health data from local hospitals or boards of health and information published in newspapers, websites, magazines, government documents and industry and trade journals. What is primary data? Primary information is data that is gathered specifically for a research project. The most familiar primary research methods are focus groups and telephone service. Financial analysis. The objective of financial analysis is to ascertain whether the proposed project will be financially viable in the sense of being able to meet the burden of servicing debt and whether the proposed project will satisfy the return expectations of those who provide the capital. While conducting a financial appraisal, certain aspects have to be looked like into. Investment outlay and cost of project, means of financing, projected profitability, break-even point, cash flows of the project, investment worthiness judged in terms of various criteria of merit, projected financial position, technical analysis, the issue involved in the assessment of technical analysis of the proposed project may be classified into those pertaining to inputs, throughputs and outputs. Input analysis. Input analysis is mainly concerned with the identification, quantification and evaluation of project inputs, that is machinery and materials. We have to ensure that the right kind of quality of inputs would be available at the right time and cost throughout the life of the project. Throughput analysis. It refers to the production operations that would perform on the inputs to add value. Usually, the inputs received would undergo a process of transformation in several stages of manufacture. Output analysis, this involves product specification in terms of physical features, color, weight, length, breadth, height, functional features, chemical material properties as well as standards to the complied with such as BIS, ISI and ISO etc. Economic analysis, economics is the study of cost and benefits. In regard to the feasibility of the study, the entrepreneur is concerned whether the capital cost as well as the cost of the product is justifiable vis a -vis the price at which it will sell at the marketplace. This cost-benefit analysis goes into financial calculations for profitability analysis that we discussed under financial analysis. At this stage, it is also useful to distinguish between the economic and commercial feasibility, whereas economic feasibility leads one to the unit cost of the product, commercial feasibility informs whether enough units would sell. Apart from the cost-benefit analysis as above, which we also refer to as private cost-benefit analysis, is also useful to do what is known as social cost-benefit analysis, SCBA. Ecological analysis. In recent years, environmental concerns have assumed a great deal of significance, especially for projects which have significant ecological implications like power plants and irrigation schemes and for environment polluting industries. The concerns that are usually addressed include the following. What is the likely damage caused by the project to the environment? What is the cost of restoration measures required to ensure that the damage to the environment is contained within acceptable limits? Project feasibility. Feasibility literally means whether some idea will work or not. It knows beforehand whether there exists a sizable market for the proposed product service, what would be the investment requirements and where to get the funding from, whether and where from the necessary technical know-how to convert the idea into a tangible product may be available and so on. In other words, feasibility study involves an examination of the operations, financial HR and marketing aspects of a business on X and basis. Thus, it may simultaneously read this lesson and the lessons on marketing, finance, etc. to have a better idea of the issues involved. What we present here under is a brief outline of the issues impinging upon the various aspects of the feasibility of the proposed project. By now, they would have understood that a feasibility is a multivariate concept that is, a project has to be viable not only in technical terms but also in economic and commercial terms too. Moreover, there always is a possibility that a project that is technically possible may not be economically viable. Now did you know that the acronymic TELOS refer to the five areas of feasibility, technical, economic, legal, operational and scheduling. Feasibility studies aim to objectively and rationally uncover the strengths and weaknesses of an existing business or proposed venture, opportunities and threats as presented by the environment, the resources required to carry through and ultimately the prospects for success. In its simplest terms, the two criteria to judge feasibility are cost required and value to be attained. As such, a well-designed feasibility study should provide a historical background of the business or project, 
description of the product or service, accounting statements, details of the operations and management, marketing research and policies, financial data, legal requirements and tax obligations. Generally, feasibility studies precede technical development and project implementation, the acronym TELOS. T E L O S refers to the five areas of feasibility, technical, economic, legal, operational, and scheduling. For technology and system feasibility the assessment is based on an outline design of system requirements in terms of input, processes, output, fields, programs, and procedures. This can be quantified in terms of volumes of data, trends, frequency of updating, etc. in order to estimate whether the new system will perform adequately or not. Technological feasibility is carried out to determine whether the company has the capability, in terms of software, hardware, personnel and expertise, to handle the completion of the project. When writing a feasibility report the following should be taken to consideration. 1. A brief description of the business to assess more possible factors which could affect the study. 2. The part of the business being examined. 3. The human and economic factor. 4. The possible solutions to the problems. At this level, the concern is whether the proposal is both technically and legally feasible. For economic feasibility economic analysis is the most frequently used method for evaluating the effectiveness of a new system. More commonly known as cost-slash-benefit analysis, the procedure is to determine the benefits and savings that are expected from a candidate system and compare them with costs. If benefits outweigh costs, then the decision is made to design and implement the system. An entrepreneur must accurately weigh the cost versus benefits before taking an action. Cost-based study is important to identify cost and benefit factors, which can be categorized as follows. 1. Development costs. And 2. Operating costs. This is an analysis of the cost to be incurred in the system and the benefits derivable out of the system. Time-based study. This is an analysis of the time required to achieve a return on investments. The future value of a project is also a factor. Legal feasibility determines whether the proposed system conflicts with legal requirements, for example a data processing system must comply with the local data protection acts. Operational feasibility is a measure of how well a proposed system solves the problems, and takes advantage of the opportunities identified during scope definition and how it satisfies the requirements identified in the requirements analysis phase of system development. For schedule feasibility a project will fail if it takes too long to be completed before it is useful. Typically this means estimating how long the system will take to develop, and if it can be completed in a given time period using some methods like payback period. Schedule feasibility is a measure of how reasonable the project timetable is. Given our technical expertise, are the project deadlines reasonable? Some projects are initiated with specific deadlines. You need to determine whether the deadlines are mandatory or desirable. Market feasibility studies typically involve testing geographic locations for a real estate development project, and usually involve parcels of real estate land. Developers often conduct market studies to determine the best location within a jurisdiction, and to test alternative land uses for a given parcels. Jurisdictions often require developers to complete feasibility studies before they will approve a permit application for retail, commercial, industrial, manufacturing, housing, office or mixed-use project. Market feasibility takes into account the importance of the business in the selected area. Resource feasibility involves questions such as how much time is available to build the new system, when it can be built, whether it interferes with normal business operations type and amount of resources required, dependencies, per cultural feasibility the project's alternatives are evaluated for their impact on the local and general culture. For example, environmental factors need to be considered and these factors are to be well known. Further an enterprise's own culture can clash with the results of the project. In case of a new project, financial viability can be judged on the following parameters. 1. Total estimated cost of the project. 2. Financing of the project in terms of its capital structure, debt equity ratio and promoter's share of total cost. 3. Existing investment by the promoter in any other business. 4. 
projected cash flow and profitability. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Business plan is the roadmap for company. It clearly states where they are, how they got there and how they plan to proceed. Business plan can go a long way in helping getting a financing need. It can also be important in helping business succeed over the long term. Business plan includes a description of products and services, a competitive analysis, a marketing plan, a management plan and a financial plan. Business plan will provide a potential investors or lenders with a clear understanding of objectives, strategies and financial viability. Market feasibility marketing research studies involve collecting information about a potential market that is used in deciding how a product or service is designed, delivered, priced and marketed.